Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 21. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Again, inspiration. Son of man, set thy foot, set thy face toward Jerusalem. He's in Babylon. Look towards Jerusalem. They were supposed to pray towards Jerusalem. That's what Daniel does. He says, set thy face toward Jerusalem and drop thy word toward the holy places. Supposed to be a holy place in Jerusalem. And prophesy against the land of Israel. And say to the land of Israel from Babylon, <laughs> Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I am against thee. I will draw forth my sword out of his sheath, and will cut off from thee the righteous and the wicked. We're going to have a division. See then that I will cut off from thee the righteous and the wicked. Don't sound good, does it? Doesn't sound like the loving God. Sound like the judge, holy God. Therefore shall my sword go forth out of his sheep against all flesh from the south to the north. That all flesh, all flesh, male, females, Jews, Gentiles, animals, may know that I am the Lord. So it says that I, the Lord, have drawn forth my sword out of his sheep. It shall not return anymore. Now, Ezekiel is brought before Jerusalem collapse under Babylon. We read in Jeremiah that it said that Nebuchadnezzar was God's servant. He uses the Babylonian army, the Chaldeans, to destroy Jerusalem. But look what he says in verse 5. My sword. But yet he used the Chaldeans. They were a sword of God against his own people. That's interesting. A bunch of heathen who worship any gods they want to worship, as Babylon come, the mystery of Babylon, which all the false religions come from, God says that those swords of those men he held are my sword. Singular. That leader, that king of that nation is my servant. I'm going to use the heathen to kick some butt. And, there, and listen, I've had God use the heathen, unsaved people to kick my butt. And I'll tell you, it's very humbling. <laughs> it's, it's very humbling for someone who doesn't want to believe or does not know the Bible or anything and come up to your face and rebuke you and they are right. Sigh, therefore, thou son of man. Oh. Like Jerusalem's going to hear him do that. But then again, you wonder what God has done. You're too loud. No, oh, I want to, whatever, you know. Thou son of man, with the breaking of thy loins. I don't know what that means. And with bitterness, sigh before their eyes. Well, the only ones that are before his eyes are the Jews have gone into captivity, and there are yet more to come. So they're watching Ezekiel. They're over there blinking. Well, what's he signed for? Preaching like Jeremiah preached, a fool. Give me some more cakes for my God. And it shall be when they shall say unto thee, Wherefore sighest thou? <laughs> what are you doing sighing? Why wouldn't he sigh? Let's just look at the, the, the facts here for a minute. Why wouldn't he sigh? He's not in his homeland no more. He can't go to Jerusalem to worship. He's in amongst, ew, Gentiles. Is that pig I smell? Sausage? Ew. What did Daniel say when they were brought the king's food? No, I ain't going to touch that. What did Peter tell the Holy Spirit? Oh, no, 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 that stuff can Peter, shut up and go and have some pepperoni. 
You know he did because the Jews got angry with him. It said to circumcise, uh, uh, I forget what the word used, but it debated. What did you do over there? All right. Why did you sigh? Thou shalt, and that thou shalt answer for the tidings. Not good tidings. This ain't the gospel here. Gospel means good news, good tidings. This is tidings because it cometh. It hasn't come yet. We're in between the first and second deportation, maybe two and three. But the third and final has not come yet. The temple is still standing. And every heart shall melt. And all hands shall be feeble. And every spirit shall faint. Isn't this what Jeremiah is preaching while Ezekiel is preaching? And all knees shall be weak as water. Behold, it cometh, and shall be brought to pass, saith the Lord God. Did they ever believe both of these men? Jeremiah and Ezekiel, they're just working together. You know, imagine those that brought, oh, Jeremiah, it's going to be war, it's going to be famine, blah, 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 blah. Here we are in Babylon. Ezekiel, what do you got to tell us? War, famine, destruction. Oh, yeah, that's what Jeremiah said. Yeah, you don't preach the love of God. Okay, where was I? Uh, hey, again the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, "Inspiration." Men wrote the Bible. Yeah, from God. You know what men did when God wrote the word? Let's see. Moses broke it. Uh, Belshazzar disregarded it. When Jesus walked away, they walked on it. Remember, he wrote bent down, wrote in the sand. Then they burnt it, but that was written by Jeremiah. Son of man, prophesy. Say, thus saith the Lord, say, a sword. A sword is sharpened and also furbished. Now, furbished means brightness. Now, isn't that just great? I'm going to take my sword. I'm going to shine it up beautiful to kill people. Just and then, I forget if it's the marine swords or the sword of the J Japanese, they would have sayings in there. And some of the sayings would be about life. Here's something new to kill. I'm going to make this sword nice and shiny. It is sharpened to make a sword slaughter. It is furbished that it may glitter. Should we then make mirth? That's merriment. Shall we be happy? It condemneth the rod of my son as every tree. The rod. Correction. Satan. And he has given it to be furbished. Brightness. That it may be handled. This sword is sharpened. It is furbished. You know how the furbished keeps showing up. To give it into the hand of the slayer. They don't want God's light, so he'll give them the light of a sword. Cry and howl, son of man. Aren't these prophets just wonderful people? For it shall be upon my people. You thought it would be upon the heathen. Well, you thought God would destroy the Babylonians for all their worship. No. Babylonians don't know nothing. And Israel can't teach them nothing because they're involved in all the false worship of the nations that they were living with, that they were to get rid of. And it shall be upon all the princes of Israel, the leaders, terrors by reason of the sword shall be upon my people again. Smite therefore upon thy thighs. Hit your thigh. Cry, howl, sigh. God is serious. Because it is a trial. Uh oh, trial. That means you know you go to court. God is standing as the judge. And what if the sword condemn even the rod? It shall be no more, saith the Lord God. The sword's going to do its purpose, and the rod's going to do its purpose. It's going to correct. It's going to judge. It's going to destroy. It's going to kill. That's the love of God. He has a sword, and he sharpens it. Listen, I know God is love, but this is the holy and just God that God 
loves the sinner but hates the sin. Really? Ezekiel 21, he loves the sinner? You haven't read your Bible. Or you got a fairy tale Bible that starts, once upon a time, you're a jerk. Therefore, thou therefore, son of man, prophesy, smite thy hands together, clap. And that's not a clap, you know, today, yeah, good performance. That was like, man, you know what, it's trouble time, sis, sis. It's like giving them the finger. And let the sword be doubled the third time. Oh, wait a minute. The sword be doubled the third time? Six times over, I would assume? The sword of the slain it is the sword of the great men that are slain, which entereth into their privily chambers, bomb shelters, hideout. God is going to find you. And Jeremiah talk about those secret chambers that were built. I have set the point of the sword against all their gates where you get into the city that their heart may faint. Uh, kind of a heart attack kind of thing. Stroke. And their ruins be multiplied. Ah! It is made bright. It is wrapped up for the slaughter. And then go back and read Lamentations about this sword and what it does. Children are walking in the streets and dying of no food and no water, crying their mom, give me some milk. And mama has no more milk. Dad, give me some bread. There is no more bread. Point. Oh my son, oh my daughter. What are you crying about your children for? You've been giving them to Molak. I'm just helping you. Wait to see what God's going to do, Galatians 6 7, with America with all the babies we killed. You got sodomite marriages now, they don't reproduce. That means you're going to have a population drop in America pretty soon because you got one group of marriage couples that are not going to be able to make children. And this guy just got HIV. You're going to have more HIV. You're going to have more sexually transmitted diseases when you got two people that are having sexual relations that God says is an abomination. And you watch him love the sinners and hate the sin. Study your Bible. Okay, I lost where I was again. I'm having fun. Go the one way or the other. Either on the right hand or on the left. What's over thy face is set. Go anywhere you want to go. I will also smite my hands again and I will cause my fury to rest. I, the Lord, have said it. You know, God just said, go wherever you want to go. I'm going to get you. Ready? Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ali, Ali, oxen free. <laughs> And you're going to hide from God? The word of the Lord came unto me again, saying, Ezekiel says, I am being inspired, inspired by God to say what I'm saying. You know how you know how he's right? Because it comes to pass. The word of the Lord came unto me again, saying, also, also, <laughs> isn't uh, verse 8 through 17 enough? Also, thou son of man, appoint thee two ways, that the sword of the king of Babylon may come. I thought you said, I thought, God, wait a minute, God, you said my sword. I thought you said my sword. It's the sword of Babylon. Babylon has been ordained, lay hands on you, by God to go get his people. So when a Christian breaks the law, oh, I'm being crucified, I'm being, uh, uh, I'm being uh, swindled by the government and being put in prison, being put. And Romans 13 says you're supposed to obey the powers that be. Israel has sinned. Judgment comes, and it comes by the Babylonian government. 
Didn't God say in Romans chapter 13, if you do good, okay, but if you do evil, watch out, beware, something like that? Because he holds not the sword in what? Vain? Is that what Romans 13 says? I have no worry about the government. I'm, as far as I know, I'm a legal binding citizen outside of maybe the speed limit. Other than that, I don't need to worry. I, as far as I know, I don't break the law. I try not to break the law. And we're not talking about persecution of Christians. We're talking about persecution of people of God who have done wrong. Just because you're a child of God doesn't mean, oh, I'll look the other way. Oh. Oh. Look at all those people in the bar fornicating and all that. Oh, look at all those people there. They're, they're drinking. And no, 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 no. God looks upon his own children. Those people are Satan's children. God ain't going to spank someone else's child. That's illegal. If I walk in the grocery store and saw someone's child acting up, if I smack that child, I'm going to jail. And yet if my children act up and if I smack them, I have a legal uh, act of God by the Bible because I am their father. God is my father. God is the father to the Jews. And if you don't behave, he's going to get that. What do you say? Rod, you got you to gotta get that. God does not allow a disobedient child. And if God does allow a disobedient child, you in trouble. You in trouble because, because he has forsaken you. He, he, he may be saved, but when you need him in time of trouble, get out of here. Get out of here. Okay, lost where I was again. Where am I? 19? The king of battle may come. He's already come once at least. And Ezekiel went with him. Can you imagine what Ezekiel's thinking? Wait a minute. He just, he just, what? Both twain shall come forth out of one land. And choose thou a place. Choose it at the head of the way to the city. So there's two ways. A point away that the sword may come to Ribla, Ribath, you can call it what you want to call it, of the Ammonites, and to Judah in Jerusalem, the defensed. Well, we know where he goes. He ends up in Jerusalem. For the king of Babylon stood at the party in the way, at the crossroads, he stood at the red light or the stop sign, at the head of two ways. To use divination. He made his arrows bright. Boy, weaponry. They're sharpening them up. He consulted with images. Wait a minute. Isn't that what Israel's doing? See, God doesn't care what Babylon's doing. Babylon's doing what comes natural to him. Serving gods. And God is going to intervene. He looked in the liver. This guy is doing pagan practice because he's a pagan. And God's going to use that pagan practice to say, he's going to, with the spinner, the dice, whatever he uses is going to be, go to Jerusalem. How's was that for a while. He's casting lots. Where am I going to go? Old small G-O-D-S. Where am I going to go? And big G-O-D says, Jerusalem. Oh, I'm going to go to Jerusalem. And he thinks his gods are answering. And God is answering to say, go get my people. How's that? You know, Christian, you may win that lottery. You may win that slot machine. And it may be to your destruction. I have yet heard somebody who won those kind of things and had a good life out there. As a matter of fact, I've, I've read where they end up bankruptcy and their life is destroyed. At his right hand was the divination for Jerusalem to appoint captains, to open the mouth in the slaughter, to lift up the voice with shouting, to appoint battering rams against the gates, to cast a mount and build a fort. So whatever this divination has to do with the liver, they cut open the animal. And the liver spots, they would read the liver spots, the markings on the liver, and they would say, well, 
buy those pictures, whatever that liver does, this is what I'm going to do. And shall be unto them as a false divination in their sight. To them that have sworn oaths, but he will call to remembrance iniquity that they may be taken. I'm going to get you guys. Oh, by the way, Babylon, what you did, I'll get you too. I've got an army set up ready to come in under your city walls and come and get you. But right now, go get my people. You know, Nebuchadnezzar could at this point say, God, no, they're protected. Sorry, God, can I pass? You find somebody else? I guarantee you can find somebody else. How about Ishmael? He'll be very happy to get how about Esau? He'd be very happy to get rid of the Jew. Me? Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because ye have made your iniquity to be remembered, and that your transgressions are discovered, so that in all your doings your sins do appear, because I say that ye are come to remembrance, ye shall be taken with the hand. Uh oh. Thou profane, wicked prince of Israel, Zedekiah, whose day is come when iniquity shall have an end. Uh oh. Thus saith the Lord God, remove the diadem, take off the crown. This shall not be the same. Exalt him that is low. Abase him that is high. There will be no more king. Israel has had it with a king. It is done. I will overthrow. Overthrow. Overturn. Oh, wait a minute. Try that back again. I will overturn. 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 It. I get so excited. And it shall be no more. Now watch this. Ready? No more king. Jeremiah says, Oh, earth, 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 write this man childless. Something of his seed shall not prosper. Now watch this. We'll read it through, then we'll read it again. Until he come whose right it is, and I will give it him. What? Who does right, and who's going to get a diadem and a crown? Jesus Christ is found in Ezekiel 21, 27 as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. After he just told Ezekiel to tell Israel, your kings are all done. There's a virgin birth of the Lord Jesus Christ not coming from Zedekiah. Not coming from David. Not coming from Solomon. Not coming from Rehoboam. I'm going to have to have a virgin birth step in there. How's that? Overturn, overturn, overturn. Didn't Jeremiah say, Or for earth? See, God just doesn't play scrabble with words. When he uses words and repeats words, he means what he's doing. You match that with, Oh, earth, earth, earth. And when he, Jeremiah says, Oh, earth, 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 Ezekiel is saying, Overturn, overturn, overturn. Wouldn't it be funny if Ezekiel and Jeremiah are saying, just, just, I don't know. So, throw this in the garbage can if I'm wrong, but imagine would it would be great if they were saying this at the same time. That'd be interesting. So when you turn on the radio, you will hear a song that said, turn, 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 and they quote from the book of Ecclesiastes. There's a time. And thou, son of man, prophesy again, and say, thus saith the Lord God, concern the Ammonites, Concerning their reproach, even say thou, the sword, the sword is drawn, for the slaughter it is furbished. Shined again. Look at the times that furbished keeps showing up. You better get the light of God in his word and not get the light of the word from his sword. Because the Hebrews uh, the 4.12 says it's the word of God is sharp and powerful. Imagine that when that sword, that word will tell you one day, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, I never knew you. Won't that be a stab in your soul gut? Imagine the day, your last time, that God says, I reject you. And how many millions and billions have you already seen go cast off in the lake of fire? To consume because of the glittering. Wiles they see vanity 
unto thee, whiles they divine a lie uh, unto thee, to bring thee upon the necks of them that are slain of the wicked, whose day is come, when their iniquity shall have an end. That neck, you've seen in the Old Testament, the enemies, they come up, they'll put their, their feet on the necks of them and slaughter them. Shall I cause it to return unto its sheep? That's the sword. The sheep is where the sword is kept. I will judge thee in the place where thou was created, in the land of thy nativity. And we're talking about the Ammonites, the children of Lot. The land of their nativity was a cave outside of Sodom and Gomorrah. The Ammonites. Remember lots of little girls there? Here, Dad, get drunk. I will pour out my nation upon thee. I will blow against thee. They're enemies of Israel. Against thee in the fire of my wrath. Fire of God's wrath. What is the fire of God's wrath according to John chapter 3? Hell. He that has the Son has life. He that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. I was talking to a guy in the prison at night, showing him the gospel on that. Show him that is hell. Imagine a Jehovah Witness telling him, Oh, the grave. Really? The grave burns? The only way I know a grave can burn is you bury him inside of an active volcano. And deliver thee to the hand of the brutish men, and skillful to destroy. Those brutish men, those skillful to destroy, these are just savages. They enjoy, they lavish in destruction, pain, torture. And the Ninevites were like that. Thou shalt be few, thou shalt be for few to the fire. Now, my car runs on spark plugs. I need a spark, I need a fire for my pistons to work. So I go to the gas station, I fill my gas tank with gasoline, fuel, to get my spark plugs to do what they need to do so the pistons can do what they can do. The gasoline is the fuel. Here, the people are the fuel. The fire will burn from the people. No dinosaurs. People, thy blood shall be in the midst of the land. Thou shalt be no more remembered. So you know it's not the Jews. For I, the Lord, have spoken. So the Ammonites have angered God. And they end up with an utter destruction by Babylon. In verses 18 to 21, Babylon is set up. But where am I going to go? Am I going to go to Jerusalem or am I going to go to Ammon? I'm going to go to both. Sin is a serious consequence in your life. You better not be on the wrong side of God. When, when 1 John 1, 9 says, we, we confess our sin. Confess your sins. You won't end up in a mess where Israel is. Israel does not. Look at the people in the Bible who never confess their sins. And look at the end of their lives. 